Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in Robert Latham and his systematic theology, and within his systematic theology, a the doctrine of the image of God. This is our final lesson on image of God. It'll be pages 395 to 405. Let's begin with block one, total depravity, reformers versus Catholic. Reformers, doctrine of total depravity. A result of original sin is our corrupt human nature. Every facet of our nature is affected, the mind, the emotions, and the will. We are dead in sin, not merely wounded. Aquinas and the Catholic position of a wounded nature. Original sin wounded human nature, weakened it, but not entirely dead, not entirely corrupt, not Protestant total depravity simply a loss of original righteousness. Now the biblical case for total depravity, Romans 2, God shows no partiality for all who have sinned and will be judged. 1 Corinthians, those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God. Ephesians 2, you were dead in trespasses and sin, following the course of the world. Not wounded, you were dead. The total inability to reach salvation must be, you must be born from above. People cannot rescue themselves and cannot please God of their own effort. And, especially, cannot even receive the revelation of God without the Father drawing them to the Son. Matthew 16. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. This opposed the Pelagian heresy that said that people could do spiritual good without being born from above first. So the Reformers definitely opposed the Catholic position, but in ancient theology, total depravity was a doctrine that countered Pelagian heresy. We are dead in sin. We can only be saved through grace. We must be born again. We must be born from above. And that is the early church position and it is the position of the reformers and it is the current position of orthodox theology for Protestant theologians. Now let's go to block two. And we have already studied in the past Martin Luther's book, Bondage of the Will. And total depravity does posit bondage of the will. Block 2, Jonathan Edwards. Man will not believe the gospel if unaided by grace. His will is in bondage to a fallen nature. It is an ethical problem. It is a ethical fallenness. Now the Pelagian heresy said the will is not in bondage. Man can respond to the gospel without the aid of grace. This contradicts accepted orthodoxy of the church and then later especially the reformers. Condemnation. The ultimate consequence of sin is eternal death. And Latham says it's something we cannot fully comprehend. So we want to take from block one, note three. There is a biblical case for the doctrine of total depravity. For the fact that we have sinned and we are dead in trespasses and sin. Ephesians 2. We are dead in trespasses and sin. So block one, we want to emphasize, note three, the biblical case for total depravity. In block two, we want to, so that's something we want to affirm in block one. Now block two, we want to negate, note two, we want to negate the Pelagian heresy. Because we know we need the aid of grace. We know that we need the 
breaking through of being born from above, so we want to negate Pelagian heresy in block two. Affirm the biblical case for total depravity in block one. Negate Pelagian heresy in block two. There is a biblical case for total depravity. And I think Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 is the best because it says you were dead in trespasses and sin. Not you were injured, not you were wounded, you were dead, completely spiritually dead in trespasses and sin. And we know that is what we have been rescued from through the grace of our Father and Jesus Christ. So we agree with Latham on referencing Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. Now the Pelagian heresy in block 2, that must be negated. That has been uh, recognized as heresy for hundreds of years. There's not even an argument over it anymore. The Pelagian heresy must be negated. There's not even any debate on that issue anymore. It can't, you know, they said that uh, a man can respond to the gospel without the aid of grace. That contradicts accepted orthodoxy and it contradicts the reformers. Therefore, without the grace of God, without salvation through Christ, we reap condemnation. The ultimate consequence of sin, eternal death, something we cannot even fully comprehend. Revelation calls it second death. Latham here calls it eternal death. Revelation calls it second death. But that is the result of the condemnation of the ultimate consequence of sin. But through the grace of the Father and through the incarnation of the Son, and through the work of the indwelling Holy Spirit, we have justification and redemption. We have been redeemed in Christ. We have been brought into the union with the hypostatic union in Christ, the union between humanity and deity. And by being en Christos, as Paul would say, we are justified and we move toward sanctification and full doxa glory. So, from the affirmation of total depravity in block one and the negation of Pelagian heresy in block two, we move on to block three total depravity is overcome by election. The doctrine of election. Election is that which brings to life the image of God within us. Election brings to life the image of God within us and counters our fallen nature. It is the act of the Father drawing us to his Son, softening our hearts so we can hear his Son, and then our response to the call of Christ, the Clasis call of Christ, and then the receiving of the indwelling Holy Spirit that continues to eschatologically develop the image of God in us. An eschatological development of the image of God that is a relational image of God as we are related to Christ by being in Christ, says Paul. So, block three Election, God's, it is God's eternal sovereign decree to save his people in Christ and Christos. It includes the determination of the Son to become incarnate, where he takes human nature into permanent union with deity. It is supported in Scripture in Romans 9. Probably the entire chapter, but 9, 6 through 24 especially. It is not the children of the flesh who are God's children, but the children of promise. 
It depends not on human will, but God who shows mercy. Not on human will, but God who shows mercy. There you go. Bondage of the will. Not of human will, but of God who shows mercy. And then Paul concludes, including us, whom he has places called. So we close out the doctrine on the image of God with the answer to human depravity as election by the living true God through the incarnation of the true Savior, Jesus Christ, given to us in Scripture in Romans chapter 9. And we know that uh, we are saved as children of promise. It depends not on human will because we suffer the bondage of the will before salvation. It is, does not depend on human will, but God who shows sovereign mercy. God who shows electing sovereign mercy. Electing sovereign mercy. We are elected in Christos. We have been elected in Christ. Election is always election in Christ. Always. We are elected in Christ. We are predestined in Christ. We are eschatologically saved in Christ. Paul used en Christos over 600 times in his letters. Over 600 times Paul used en Christos. It was the central sign of his theology. We are saved by being in Christ. We are saved by the incarnation of Christ being elected in the incarnation of Christ. We have been elected in the incarnation of Christ, which counters our fallen state of total depravity. That will wrap up 395 to 405. That will conclude the doctrine of the image of God, which ran from 315 to 405. And in our next lesson, we will, I should say our next gathering, we will discuss the next section of Robert Latham's systematic theology that we will take up.